Let's now consider slope. In general, we cannot land down a slope. Even a gentle slope will add many hundreds of meters to our required landing distance. We can land up a slope with care, and faced with a field landing on sloping ground, it would be preferable to land uphill rather than downhill, even if this means we land downwind. But if all that is available is a sloping field, then you have started your field selection procedure too late and you should have considered the field availability sooner in order to give greater choice. If a sloping field is inevitable, then you should approach to land up the slope regardless of the wind direction. So, slope is very important and we should spend some of the time we have available looking for and assessing any slope that is present in order to be able to reject the field or take that slope into account when planning a landing. Let's get back to trying to identify the slope. Any slope that is visible from 1,500 feet or so is unacceptable, and even steep slopes can be difficult to detect from overhead the field. To see a slope, we have to view the field from the side, and ideally two sides. Looking at the picture, we are considering the fields in the centre of the view. It's tilled with no crop showing at the moment, but disregarding its surface, if we simply fly overhead or very close to the field as we are now, it looks reasonably flat. We are planning to land from the top of the picture towards the bottom, and at the moment that looks okay. But before we make an approach, we are going to fly around the field, maintaining enough distance from it to enable us to view the field at an angle. As we approach the end of our leg, we will look back to see the field from a different angle. And now we can see quite clearly that the field is sloping, and that slope is downhill in our intended landing direction. There is another clue to slope in this picture we can see, and that is the change in surface colour. Across the middle of the field and running into the adjacent field, it's there due to the runoff of groundwater, which leaves a different surface contrast. This colour change adds a perspective to the field that suggests a slope. It's not always there, but when it is, it's helpful. It should at least make you suspicious that there is some slope to the field. There are some other indicators of slope we can look at that should give us a clue as to what the slope might be. The wriggling line is a stream, and that would suggest that the fields in this picture will slope down towards the stream. Not by very much in this picture, but you get the idea. Nature always makes wriggling lines. A straight line is man-made. A wriggling line is generally a stream. Even if you can't see the water as in this scene, a wriggling line of bushes should suggest a stream, and that might help to determine slope. Let's recap. Any slope must be identified before it's too late to take it into account, or the field is rejected. If you can identify a slope from the air, it is too steep to land down. You cannot identify slope from overhead. If you have to land on slope, land uphill, even if this means downwind. An uphill landing will require a substantial increase in your approach speed, much higher than for a landing on a level field. During the roundout, there is a much larger angle through which the nose must be rotated, Effectively, you're attempting to fly uphill until touchdown, and that requires a lot of extra energy. As a rough guide, you should add around 10 knots for every degree of upslope. Of course, slope is not easy to quantify, so adding a good healthy 15 or 20 knots to your normal approach speed is not excessive. You will very quickly burn off this extra energy during roundout and subsequent very short ground roll. Oh, and don't leave your roundout too late. Remember there is a greater angle through which to rotate and that will take an extra couple of seconds to achieve. So approach faster and round out earlier.